part five of our Earth Science SOL review. In this section, we'll focus on rock types and also, you know, that would include the rock cycle, so how one rock changes to another type of rock or back to the same type of rock or to a new type of rock. All right, the first type of rock that we're going to talk about are igneous rocks. They form from cooling and crystallizing of magma or lava. Okay, so... Uh, Based on their cooling rate, if they cooled slowly, they will be considered coarse-grained and have large crystals. Or if they cooled quickly, they will consider fi be fine-grained and have either small or no crystals present. Okay, So you can see here some examples of igneous rocks and kind of see the difference. So. This is slow cooling, it's coarse grained. So if it cools slowly, then it's cooling inside the earth, meaning it's going to be an intrusive igneous rock. Okay, so like gabbro, diorite, granite, all of those are going to be slow to cool and have larger crystals. And by crystals, we don't mean like quartz crystals, well sometimes it can be, but you can see that it's made up of different minerals very easily, very nicely. Alright, if it cools quicker, it's cooling on the outside of the Earth's crust. So they are given the extrusive, that's what they're called. So all of these are extrusive and fine-grained. These are also extrusive, but not fine-grained. So fine-grained, you can see in basalt in comparison with gabbro, basalt uh, it's hard to tell from this picture, but it is made up of small little grains of minerals. So that's what it is, smaller grains. Same thing with rhyolite. Porphyritic means varying sizes. All right, scoria and pumice are special uh, because they have those gas pockets, which is called vesicular. And then obsidian is our glassy one. So all of those are extrusive, okay, but they're either fine-grained, vesicular, or glassy. And that's dependent on their cooling rate. So obsidian cooled really quickly, didn't have any time to form crystals, whereas granite took a long time to cool and formed lots of crystals. And then basalt somewhere in the middle. Okay, and here's just a cool picture to kind of show you that. All right, so your igneous rocks. So you have granite here cooling on the inside because it's an intrusive igneous rock, whereas rhyolite is cooling on the outside, meaning it's an extrusive igneous rock. Same thing when comparing gabbro. It's inside the earth, so it's intrusive, whereas basalt is going to cool outside, so it's extrusive. All right, sedimentary rocks form First, they must be weathered or broken down and then eroded, so moved somewhere, right? And then after they're moved, they'll be compacted and cemented together to form uh, a sedimentary rock. All right, so the first kind that we're going to look at, they're divided up into two types. They're either clastic or non-clastic. Clastic meaning that it's made of other rocky fragments. All right, so the clastic sedimentary rocks are divided up based on their sediment size. So you can see over here, breccia and conglomerate have a larger sediment size, meaning they're made up of larger pieces of rocks. All right, whereas shale or mudstone are made up of really fine particles, fine pieces of rocks. You can see they're actually a lot smoother to the touch. Sandstone is somewhere in the middle. All right, our non-clastic sedimentary rocks are ones that are not made up of those things. So they can be grouped into either an organic group, meaning it's coming from something that was once living, or a chemical group, meaning that it evaporated or precipitated out of water. All right, so here we have uh, an organic sedimentary rock made up of shell particles or pieces of shells, 
So this one is, if you look up here, it's made of limestone. All right, limestone is made up of calcite, which if you remember, remember from our mineral stuff, it reacts with acid, so it will fizz and bubble when you put acid on it. Our other common type of organic sedimentary rock is going to be coal. So coal is formed from plant remains that decayed over time. And then here we have our rock salt, which evaporates out of salty waters, and then we get our rock salt. Alright, the last type of rock that we're going to go over is metamorphic rocks. They form by heat and pressure from the inside of the earth. Okay, usually from our tectonic plates moving. So, uh, metamorphic rocks are also broken up into two groups. They're either non-foliated or foliated, meaning layered or non-layered. All right, so first we're going to go over the layered ones. All right, so they are broken up based on how layered they are or how banded they are. So you can see here that shale is going to be our least banded metamorphic rock. And it's just kind of like, a, it says smooth fracture. And that's kind of exactly what it is. All right, it's you can tell that it's made up of layers, but it's very... Uh, it's just kind of like layers of the same type of rock. All right, we did not see phyllite in lab, but if we skip down to schist here, schist. All right, it's going to be layered as well. That one kind of had the sparkles and was layered. And then our most banded one would be gneiss. So this is a picture of gneiss here. Here's a picture of gneiss's crystal grains. So you can see that it's it's got definite stripes. It's the most banded that there is. All right, so shale is least banded, least layered. Nice is most banded or most layered. Also indicating that Nice is the most metamorphosized or most changed metamorphic rock from all of them. Okay, and then, and this is a really cool picture, okay? So granite, I mean, Nice can also form from granite. It doesn't just have to come from schist. So... Here, I know it's a little blurry, but you can see this is a picture of granite before metamorphism. And you can see that once pressure was applied, and of course heat to make it malleable, it turned all these into nice little layers, nice little lines. So that'll give us our nice metamorphic rock. All right, and then our non-foliated metamorphic rocks are the ones that aren't going to be layered. So these are things like marble and quartzite. I'm going to point out that marble is made up of limestone, which is also made up of calcite, which, if you remember, reacts with an acid. So that's how you can tell marble. It'll, be, it'll produce that fizzing reaction. All right, and here is a beautiful picture of marble.